prayer now. Let us sit back and be ready to receive from the throne of God. Stay blessed as we welcome him at Langaman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nempela Sngaya Pimasuga Goye. He, he is our life. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Uh, the past two services, Hallelujah. Because we have Let me take this opportunity to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is time for offering. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I also want to greet our online brothers and sisters who are joining us. And we are trusting God that there's going to be something very good and powerful that God will impart into your lives even today. We are taking offering this morning. And I want to encourage you from the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and verse 6. It's a very familiar scripture. And I believe that God will bless us as we... Look at what the Lord is saying unto us. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and with this thing. Surely, by now they could have gone back to the drawing board to say, uh -uh, days are difficult now. Maybe we should ask people to stop a bit. But because it is God who has brought up the idea of giving. We give in season and out of season. Not necessarily because we have abundance, but, but because the one who has promised is faithful. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I know for a fact that the times that we are living in, there is no topic that has been attacked like it is, like the topic of giving in the house of God. I know there are people, and all these things. Some of you, it may not necessarily be human beings that are talking to you against your giving. It could be your financial situation. You're looking at your situation and you realize I will not be able to meet my budget. Let me cut off there. But let me say to you this morning that God who has said we should trust him even with our substance, he is able to make all grace to abound towards you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I have always said this and I will say it over and over again that we are not necessarily giving out of abundance. But we are giving out of obedience because we believe that he who has promised is faithful. Hallelujah. And I want to say this, that in the, even in the midst of all the difficult situations that we may be finding ourselves with, or we may be finding ourselves in, watch the space. God is going to show himself mighty and strong on our behalf because we are his children. He is faithful. Were you thinking of drawing back, especially when you look at the prices of the commodities around and you like, eh, let me cut this one off, maybe for petrol purposes. Give it unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he is faithful, he will see you through. Hallelujah. Shall we give God a praise offering as we, as we close our eyes this morning? We are praying, but I just want to assure you that just in case you were doubting, I know human beings may have hijacked the issues of giving for their own personal gain. But this morning, the Lord is saying, I am faithful. You can trust me again. Father, we thank you. We thank you that, Lord, as we give this morning, our faith is not on human beings, but our faith is in you. And the Bible says, those that trust you shall never be disappointed, O oh God. Even in these difficult times, O oh God, economically, you are still God. You do not change. And we continue to trust you with our substance, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the church of God say, Amen. 
Hallelujah. He is faithful. And as I go to sit down, like we have already said, you can see Muruti Matebula is not around, but we have the servant of the Lord all the way from Ebony Park. And I can assure you, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. You are blessed as you give. Remember, you can use one of our many secure platforms to give. Go on to our HRM app, click on the campus you're from, and find the EFT details at the bottom. Alternatively, you can use SnapScan. Download it onto your mobile device, fill in your details as well as the amount. You can also scan the QR code appearing on the screen right now. Thank you for partnering with Hope Restoration Ministries in expanding God's kingdom, and God bless you. We thank God that you could join us online and in person. My name is Dani Rembata and here are your HRM News. Ladies, the conference that we have been praying and fasting for is finally here. We hope that you are excited to spend time in the presence of the Lord. Now ladies, if you haven't purchased your tickets, you can still do so because registration closes today. Ladies, please take note of the following for the conference. So the service will start on Thursday evening at half past six until half past eight. And the theme for Thursday evening is golden oldies. So that means we need to come dressed in our vintage attire. And on Friday, the service will start at half past six until half past eight. And the theme for Friday is Western Africa. So that means that we need to come dressed in our West African print. And on Saturday, registration will start at eight o'clock in the morning so that we can come for tea and registrations. The service will start at nine o'clock. So that means that the registration of the service will end at 8.55. So at 8.50, the auditorium needs to be full with us ladies sitting and waiting. So the service will start from 9 until 5. And the theme for Saturday is elegant. So that means that we need to dress up, look good, since this is the first conference that we are having in person after the COVID season. Now, to avoid long queues on Saturday for your meals, please note that the coupons will be on sale for your lunch at the information desk after the service. Now, ladies, they say that summer bodies are made in winter. But we say kingdom bodies are maintained throughout the year. So we'll be having our embrace walk or run, which will be taking place on the 9th of August 2022 from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. at your respective areas. So please come join and let us have fun. And the embrace t-shirts are 150 rand each. Now, church, please can you take note of the service time changes for Midrand campus only. So the first service will start at 9 a.m. until half past 10, and your second service will start at 11 until half past 12. Gents, please note that your Gents Night will be taking place on the 19th of August, 2022, but more details will be communicated to you closer to the time. Now that's it from me, Kali Rembata. Have a blessed week ahead, and do enjoy the service. Do you have victorious women in the house? I was not talking about gents. I was talking about victorious women. Can I hear the victorious women in the house? We am excited together with you. And I just want to say to you, registration is closing today for those who have been contemplating on registering. So let's let's just run to the registration tables outside so it's closing today it's your conference but if you have registered you know you can go and collect your tickets today so that you avoid those long queues on saturday and if you registered for a coupon as well just rush out there get it so that you are ready so if if you are a man uh, and your wife is here she has not registered just become that blessing because we're gonna need her to bless you in in october in our conference as well but if you are not married, then how about you? You bless a sister. Who knows? It might be God speaking, you know. So, so just go out there, buy, buy the ticket and just close your eyes. Whichever sister you meet, you know, that's the one you must give the ticket to. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a big hand of praise. Wonderful, wonderful. 
Thank you. We wanna we we wanna take this time and just and and, and just acknowledge our parents, Reverend SC and Pastor Pierre Matebula for the good work they are doing in the ministry as well in our nation as well. And and we know that God has been gracing them, and we are thoroughly following. Let's appreciate them uh, this morning, even as we we start with our service this morning. Amen. Amen. And, and, and at the same time, I want you to appreciate yourself. You are here this morning, and I can see the Lord has been doing a good work in your life. And, and, and we, are, we are looking forward to see, to see God continue to do great things in your life. You know, say, look at your neighbor, because next week you'd have changed. There will be something in them that, that would have changed, and, and you'll be wondering, where have you been? And did they never knew that God continuously, you know, do things in our lives. He changes us and he adjusts us so that we become the perfect people he wants us to be. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Let's welcome those that are watching us online. And we are inviting them as well that if the time and moment permits, they will also come and join us in the house of the Lord. My brother from another mother. And that mother, so you well say, thank you so much. We come far. We come far. Okay. Everything else done. This month we are talking about kingdom come. One thing that I'm asking myself, I'm sitting down, I'm asking myself, how are my brothers and the parents doing with three services? Yo, I'm tired, man. So, 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 so I don't know. And, 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 and I believe that, that, that it is the grace of God. It is, it is the grace of God. And, and, and I, when, when I see them, when I see Pastor Mungwai, Pastor Muteto, when I see Ref later, I will say, big up to you. I know you are doing a great work. You know, so, so we, we, we are learning from them as well. Hallelujah. Wonderful. So we know this year we are laboring under kingdom come. That's the theme of our year. And this month we are, we are concluding the month of July, wherein we are talking about kingdom warriors. But I've titled my message this morning, Faith Beyond Defeat. Faith Beyond Defeat. Because in life, you know, there are times when we feel defeated and discouraged. I've passed through those moments in my life. And I don't know about you, because it seems like I'm talking to people whose life has been, you, you know, on, on an overdrive. Everything else is going well. You know, there are, there are times when all things, you know, seem to be falling apart and nothing seems to help. And, and, and we have gone through the season of, of, of COVID. We have seen many people that have lost their jobs. We've seen many people whose, whose businesses shut down. We have seen people who cons consistently continue to struggle. When they knock at one door, it seems like it's closed and they move to the other. Even the one that they hope will close, will open, is actually closing on them. And then we have seen how many people continue, you know, to bury their loves, loved ones, one after the other. And, and you are at the point where even your faith is challenged and, and you feel like God is not hearing your prayers. And, and those are the moments when, when, when we ourselves, if, if not all of us, are going through in this period in our lives. Because, because most of us, we know that, you know, our lives were not meant, you know, to, to experience only good things. That's why in the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says, you know, there's time and season for everything. You know, if you are in season of laughing, don't laugh too hard because, because you're going to start crying very soon. You see, if you are in a season of plenty, don't spend everything you've got because you're going to enter into a season of lack very soon. You see, when you are in a season of excitement, things are going well. You know, don't, don't be too excited because the season of things to start changing is coming. Because most of us, we, we think that things will remain the same forever. And, 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 and we don't know that those are the times that are meant to test the depth of our faith and our reliance to God. You know, sometimes when, when life is not everything, you know how feet about it and gamla everywhere you go. You know, when, when, when you walk around, your walk will tell when you have money or not. And, and then everybody else wishes to be like you. You see, don't, don't, don't fool yourself. Always remember that there are moments when even what you have will be tested. You know, you know there are moments when the devil will come and jump, shake you a bit and see whether your faith is still founded. Whether your faith is still where it needs to be. Because if we don't go through this moment in our lives, we will not be able to know whether God is on our side or not. Even great men of faith, they have gone through the testing moments in their lives. Even great men of faith, they went through seasons in their lives. And in all these seasons, they all need to test you and see whether you are still standing in God. Because the Bible in the book of James, it says, you know, he weighs every challenge and, and, and problems and sin and temptation. 
and he weighs it and see whether you'll be able to carry it. And when it's your size, he releases it to you. So can I declare to you this morning what you are dealing with, it's your size. So, 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 so don't ever look around and think that it was meant for somebody else. It was meant for you. The person who was supposed to bury the husband was you. It's not your neighbor. Your neighbor cannot handle it. But God knew you can handle. The one who was supposed to lose your job was you. Because he knew that you can stand it. The one who was supposed his, his business to close down was you. Because he knew that you will rise up even after your voices has closed. So what you are dealing with is your size. Stop shifting the blame. Stop looking anywhere else. It's your size. And God knows that you'll be able to get out of it. So whoever has led you in it, in it, he will be able to lead you out of it. Because the truth, Barcelona, is life is a series of battles and warfare. We fight spiritual warfares. The spiritual warfare that we don't know where they come from. You're fighting spirits we, you don't know. Because most of the time, you know, we eat things without even knowing whether they contain spirits in them or not. You know, we, 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 we associate ourselves with people that we don't know what spirit they carry. We share lunches with them, but we don't know which God do they worship. You know, we, we, they, they bless us with clothes that we never pray for, but we just wear them. And we've never asked whether God has blessed those or not. You know, they, they give you money, you are so excited, you take it, but you've never prayed for it. And before you know it, you wonder why you are always broke. It's because you took the wrong money somewhere and you never prayed for it. So we are fighting with the spirit. The devil never gives things for free. Remember, he masquerades like the angel of light. So he will come like light. He will give you like it's coming from God. You know, he will talk to you like he's coming from God. But you must check. It's a trap. It's a trap. Everything you receive, pray for it before you use it and you take it into your house. Pray for it. It's spiritual. We also deal with physical battles. That doctors will tell you that you've got less months or less days to live. And you are so depressed, you don't pray, you can't do anything else. You're already checking the funeral covers and everything else. Who told you you're going to die? God is asking Isaiah, Isaiah, whose report do you believe? Whose report? Why is it so, 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 so prevalent in our society that we believe all these reports? Petrol is going up and everything else is going up. Your blood pressure is also going up with the same petrol price because you don't believe the report of God. If he says, I will provide for you. He never told us when there's, there's famine or no famine. He said, I will never leave you, I'll never forsake you. I'm not stressed, I'm okay, I'm okay. I know he will take care of me. Listen, he's... Israel, He remains the same. He's not affected by your circumstances. But then you are affected. You, 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 you are allowing all these things to give you blood pressure. There are a lot of people who are sick here. It's not inherited. It's a physical battle you are failing to confront. Sometimes you must accept that on a chalet. You see, acceptance is the first line to, 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 to being delivered. You need to accept that I don't have money. Then after I've accepted I don't have money, I'm saying, what am I going to do now? I need to make a plan. But if you're still thinking that, but people should not think I don't have money. You'll use that credit card until you, you've exceeded the limit. And you'll go and take another loan because you are living at the standard of other people. Sometimes accept you don't have money. Sometimes accept you are struggling. Sometimes accept that you need help. Because until you cry out to the Lord, he says, if you cry out to me, I will help you. But if you don't cry out, he's not going to help you. Because you're walking around as if we've got it all together. When you walk with people, you dress up like you've got it all together. Hey, you are struggling. You need to call for help. Because if you don't call for help, you'll sink deeper and deeper into depression. And that talks to our emotional battles. Because many people are depressed. Many people are dealing with mental sicknesses. Why? It's because you have not accepted where you are. Accept that you created a mess. You need to find a way of fixing it. Accept that I am who I am today. I had a part to play. But I need the grace of God to help me. Accept that, that, that the, all the deaths that you have around you are your fault. Nobody else. 
Nobody took your hand and cut it and go and press your pin number and start spending money. You did it on your own. And you need to come back to your senses and say, now I'm deep in debt. How am I going to get out of it? Because sinking deeper in depression doesn't take you out of problems. No wonder we've got so many suicides. No wonder we have so much dom domestic violences. Because when you can't sort out your financial issues, you think beating people up will sort it out. Because if you don't sort out your, your financial issues and you don't get your mental, your, 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 your mental state right, you think screaming and yelling at people is going to sort it out? It's messing up even the, the bridges you were thinking you were building. So we need to confront the things that we are struggling with. Because Jesus himself was continuously experiencing similar battles. And he overcame them. They spat on his face. So why are you surprised? The very same people who were clapping for him and saying, Hey, Lord King, he's riding on a donkey for free. The donkey that he never paid for. Tomorrow are the same people who are saying, Crucify him. Kill him. But then when you find it easy because you want to live a celebrated life. You want everybody else to celebrate. Everybody must, must fall in love with you. And you don't realize that, that the more people love you, the more it becomes a blind spot because you won't even see when you are falling. You need people that are, that are criticizing you because they align you. You need people that are gossiping about you because they are helping you to be better. You need people that are confronting you when you do wrong things because they help you to become a better person. You don't need people that are always celebrating you. They are dangerous. You don't need them in their life. If every time they are telling you how good you are, but they have never told you one thing that you are doing wrong, they are not good for your journey. Because the good people will come and tell you that you are messing up. And you need to sort yourself out. Because those are helping you. Faith beyond defeat means the ability to stand in the midst of your adversity. The Bible in the book of Ephesians 6 verse 13, it says, Therefore, put on full armor of God so that when the days of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. It doesn't say put on the full armor when the battle is intensifying or when you see the enemy coming, go look for the armor. It says continuously put. You must always have the full armor. You know, that's why Paul says pray without ceasing. He never said pray from the early hours of the morning until the late evening. No, no, no. He says when you find an opportunity and a moment, pray. When, when you find a moment to be alone, pray. When you're on lunchtime, have a time to eat and a time to pray. You know, when you are driving home, just shut the, the radio for a moment and just thank God that I have made it and I have made it home. Find every moment and a reason to play. When you are faced with challenges, thank God, dance in the rain. Sometimes you don't have to cry because it, it rains in your life. Dance in the rain. Sometimes dance in your pain. Sometimes thank God, even when things don't make sense. Because when I thank God in my pain, I will be able to exalt him when things are going well. Because we are saying irrespective of what happening in our lives, Father, we will thank you. It means the courage to remain hopeful and focused even when things are not working out. In Luke 5, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. And I, I, I like it because uh, the Bible, when it talks about their whole night work, it doesn't say, you know, they, uh, Lord, we have worked the whole night. It says we have toiled the whole night. It means we have worked and we can't show the result. It means we have pulled out the whole night our efforts, our energy, our resources, but yet we've got nothing to show. You see, if you work without Jesus, you are toiling. If, if, if you are busy attempting to do things and Jesus is not part of your life, you are toiling, you are working hard. You are working and you work three times harder to try and show results and still it will, it will not show anything. That's what the Bible says. says. says, how else do we build a house without the Lord? Because it says the builders who build it, they are building in vain. So you can build it, but when the storms come, they will wipe it away. You can try and build it, but it will not stand because you need to build it with Jesus. Refuse that, that you, are, you are working but God is not with you because you will be toiling. When Jesus comes, he doesn't say to them, change the location. He says exactly where you are. Launch to the deep. 
Because sometimes our problem is we want to use our vision without translating them into the vision of God. And God is saying, you don't have to go anywhere. Don't go look for Musebelezi. Don't go look for a prophet exactly where you are. Just launch into the beat. You need to wait for the word that tells you to launch. You cannot go and launch on your own. You cannot go and do all this hard work until God has told you to do so. We are disappointed. We are discouraged. We are working in vain because God has never told us to go. Why can't we be like Moses who says, Lord, if you don't go with me, I'll go nowhere. He says, we'll stay here, we'll camp here, unless if you can tell us that you are coming with us. But how many of us, we have taken Jen, we have taken assignments, we have taken projects, all of them, we left them unfinished. Because God was never part of it. When not all your, your assignments are unfinished. And you keep on saying, no, God has put this in my head. You know, I think God is going to make this successful and you leave it also unfinished. Because you never studied it right. Because the Bible in the book of Psalms, oh, sorry, Proverbs 5, it says, commit all your ways, 3, 5. It says, commit all your ways to the Lord and he will make your path straight. Don't lean in your own understanding. But in everything, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So you don't need to acknowledge him in everything else. Acknowledge them when you are raising your children. Acknowledge them when you are drawing up a budget. Acknowledge them when you are starting a business. Acknowledge him when you are about to start a car and go to work. Acknowledge him when you are entering your workplace and you are opening the door. Acknowledge him before you go into a meeting. Acknowledge him before you talk to people. Acknowledge him before you sign deals. Because if you acknowledge him, he will make every way of your successful. We need to acknowledge him. And the, it means also the courage to rise up, dust yourself off, and start again. See, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31, the Bible says, But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. But it's only those who trust in the Lord. Who are you trusting in? Are you trusting in your money? You trusting in your wisdom? You trusting in your ability? Or in what has made me to be here? It's my ability. I'm smart. You know, you know, God has given me all this wisdom. And I'm able to do these things because me, you see me, I'm smart. And you forget that, that when the moment of tiredness comes, because it comes, there's a moment you're going to get tired. But he says, those who trust in the Lord, they will renew their strength. So it depends on who you are trusting in. So listen to me. There are moments when running is not going to work for you. You're going to have to start walking. There are moments even when walking would not be so much prevalent to you. But you're going to have to start crawling. You see, the moment we stop is the moment our life ends. So it does not matter what happens in your life. If you can't run, rather walk. If you can't walk, crawl. If you can't crawl, push yourself. But at least let there be a movement. Because you see, every time the Bible says, when we take a step, God takes it with us. And when we take another one, he takes it with us. So I cannot afford to stop. I'm going to have to make a movement. Because when I make a movement, it propels God to move together with me. Refuse. Don't give up. Don't give up. You know, I told them in the, in, the, in the past two services about Hannah. The Bible says year in and year out, they will go to, to Silo, Hannah, Elkanah, and, and Penina. So Penina had many children. And, and then Hannah was praying year in and year out, praying for a child, and, and the child is not coming. And one thing that I really thank God, and, and you know, and I get to realize that God is very smart. So God, God never revealed how many years did Hannah pray? Because if it was, it was two years, we would have built a, a doctrine around it to say, you know, he's the God of two years. You know, he's, he's a God. You know, in two years, the, 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 the answer is coming. If, if she prayed for three years, we would have said, you know, on the third year, my brother, the Lord is going to deliver you. But the Bible says year in and year out, he, she continues to pray. You see, and it only says to us, and one day, then the priest Eli heard her as she was praying. You see, you need to continue praying year in and year out. Yes, you might not see anything, but keep on praying year in and year out. It does not matter. But the Bible says in due season, we will reap the reward if we don't give up. So don't give up. Keep on praying. Things are falling apart. Keep on praying. You are losing things. Keep on praying. Because in the process of praying, your due season will come. And I think what messes up with most of us 
is the fact that we don't know when his due season coming. It's due season. It's like a boy. The father prays for him. He has sprayed his ankle. And the father prays and he says, Father, we are waiting for the manifestation of your healing upon the life of his boy. And when he's done, the boy asks the father in the morning, Daddy, my foot is still painful. So the father says, boy, we are waiting for the manifestation of God. And the boy goes to school, he comes back. And he says, daddy, my ankle is still paining. When is the man from the station coming? Because the boy knows that we're going to have to wait for the manifestation. So this man from this station, if he doesn't come, the boy is not going to heal. You see, we need to be persistent and always wait for the manifestation of the word of God. Because when the word manifests, it changes things. When the word manifests, it creates those things that were never created. When the word manifests, it delivers and it, and it, it anchors us in the word of God. We need to wait for the manifestation of God. Let us read together this morning in the book of Judges, chapter 16. We read from verse 15. And it says, then she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? I'm sure it's a familiar scripture to all the men who have the wives here. Especially if they don't have that bank card. They're asking, how can you say I love you? If you are still holding your cart with you. You have mocked me this, this three times. And have not told me where your great strength lies. And it came to pass when, the, the, when she passed at him daily. With her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. That he told her all his heart and said to her. No razor has ever come upon my head. For I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I'm shaven then my strength will leave me. And I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come upon once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in her hand. There is nothing money cannot buy. Then she lured him to sleep on her knees, and she called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Father, bless the reading of the word in Jesus' name. Amen. How often do we always come into the presence of the Lord, yet the presence is not in us? How many times do we come and we raise our hands in his sanctuary? And we, we are inviting him in our lives, but, but we know deep in our hearts that he's not here. How many people still, you know, they, the Bible in the book of Timothy says they've got a form of godliness, but they have denied its power. How many times do we come here looking so godly, but yet we are godless? We don't have him in our hearts. This is exactly where this man found himself. That every time when the Israelites, they did evil in the eyes of God, God will send them to their, to their enemies to become slaves. This time, they were subjected to the authority of the Philistines for 40 years. And Samson was supposed to be their hope. Was supposed to be their hope. Maybe it's you in your family. But everyone else was not as smart as you are. Everyone else was not as blessed as you are. And the moment you became blessed and you, you, you succeeded, you became everyone's hope. You became everyone's messiah, just like he was. He became everyone's deliverer, just as he was. That, you see, God knew that the Israelites at some point would be subjected to the hands of the Philistines. And he already provided a solution. You see, whatever you are facing today, God has a solution. And you are the solution. Because you see, the danger we have in our generation is the demons we fail to conquer will terrorize and overpower our next generation. If we're not going to deal with them, they're going to conquer us. The few things that we agree about the life of Samson is one, he was anointed. All, all of us we know. But number one is Samson was anointed. We could see anointing in him. We could see empowerment in him. God empowered him. How else will a man without an army, one man will kill 10,000 Philistines with a jaw of a donkey? One man who would take thousands and thousands down. This guy was a powerhouse. This guy was an army on his own. Because you see, 
it's better you alone with God than you alone without God fighting the enemies. Because I'm telling you, the Bible says, you know, many are those that are with us than the ones that are with them. You've got, you've got the legion of angels around you. You've got the multitude that are surrounding you. You need to know that you are never fighting alone. It might look like you are alone, but people don't know that you are carrying a God that cannot be defeated. So this man, he was anointed, he was empowered, but he exploited his power. More often in our life, he's, we get to this stage. There's a man, his name is Mutembo. Yeah, let's, let's forget the first name. So this Mutembo guy, back in 2006, he sued Transnet millions. And after he won million, he left the wife in Soweto. And then he married a girl 30 years younger than him. Because you see, when God elevates you, you need to change the old car you've got and try and get the new car. Instead of refurbishing the one you have. Put some nice Mac wheels. You know, put some new seats. You know, take it so that they can respray it. And then it becomes the car that you want. So this man thought, no, this is it's going to cost me too much. Let me buy a new one. The first time we heard about penthouses, Batumabasu was through Mtembo. The first time we knew that a man can buy his and has yellow Lamborghinis was because of this man. The very first time women could learn about pavilion, hers, was through this man. They make it fashionable today, but she made it fashionable. And it was not long. The next article was saying, mm, Tembu, suit for pub health. The man who had millions could not support children and wife. Because the younger woman showed him how to suck a man dry in a short space of time. Basalani. This is exactly what the devil does to us. The devil will suck you dry in a very short space of time. Just because you are loaded. Have you ever seen a man, even if he cannot be so good looking, when he has money, all the beautiful women are queuing for him. They leave us, they go to him. Because you see, Money, money will make you attractive. Money has power. You might not smell him well, but when you have money, it changes the environment. But this man, he exploited his power. Let's see the consequences of his decision. He lost his vision. Because you see, some people get drunk with money so much that they end up not seeing where they are going. We are not blind. So you are not seeing. So, so this man, he says, he lost his vision. He, he became blind. In Judges 16 verse 21, the Bible says, then the Philistines seized him, gushed out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. I don't know where up he was. But the only time we hear is, they took him down to Gaza. Because where you are, God has elevated you. God has put you on a pedestal. You're going to have to fight to, to remain there. That's why the Bible says, if you are standing, be careful that you don't fall. Because it's only people who are on a pedestal that can fall. When your problem is you are listening to people who are down there, they are making noise because they are down. They want you to come to their level. So he never realized that where you are, many people desire for you to come down. When they've got an opportunity, they'll take you down to Gaza with you. The sad thing with Gaza is, how shall we born or blind? They take him to Gaza, but he does not know whether he's arrived or not. When they, take, they took him to, to Gaza, it's because he has no vision, he can't see anymore. Don't allow the devil 
to blind you that you don't see when things are falling apart. Because you know what? The devil works with a sin of familiarity. He will never tempt you with people you don't know. He was tempted and sold by his own wife. Wife. So, so you need to be careful because God uses familiarity. The people you share lunch with, the people you're always calling and talking to, the people, that lady who comes and clean your office, you know, that one who's taking minutes for you, that one who knows how many sugar, a teaspoon of sugar you get in your tea but your wife doesn't know. So, so, so it's all these things that are familiar that the devil will always look because he's after our vision. Number two, he lost his strength. So they, bow, they bound him. The Bible in the book of Judges 16 verse 22 there, it says, but he did not know that the Lord has departed from him. He said, I will go out as I always can. And I will free myself as I always do. But then this time, it was different. Do you know when is going to be the last time you play the games you always play? Do you know when will it be the last time you are dingling your salvation before the devil? Do you know when will it be the last time that you'll be going with the same experience you think you have? That you can play church and play God and still you, you survive things? Do you think God will always be there to watch you becoming a Christian on Sunday and something else Monday to Saturday? Do you think God will watch you and still allow you to be successful even though you are not devoted to him? He thought experience will still sustain him. But it was too late. It says the strength was gone because the Lord has departed. Bazalani, sin has a tendency of binding us and tying us up. You see, sin is not going to come and say, Hi, Basi, I'm here. My name is Sin. No, it's going to come looking very good. It will come being a yellow ball. It will come in a nice mini skirt. It will come with a push-up bra. It will come with everything else. And when you see it, you, you are seeing God's creation, but you don't see sin. But you don't realize that it's only a matter of time until it bites you. Because all of us, we're expecting the devil to come in a horn and carrying a long fork. We don't realize that he comes wearing Brazilian hair. And he comes in a way that he will be accepted and accommodated by us. Be careful that you don't walk with we experience. Can you experience? The Bible says his messes are new every morning. Can you experience new messes every morning? Can you experience a different God every morning? Because that's God wants us to experience. And he lost his victory. The Bible in Judges 16 verse 21 it says he became a grinder in prison. You see the enemy is always looking for an opportunity to expose our weaknesses. Usila mabele marhasa bona. Utwa di voices but he cannot identify who's in the room. Because the devil is always looking for one thing. If you can't see, you can't have it. If you cannot see it, you will never be pregnant of it. And if you can't be pregnant of it, you will never give birth to it. He knows that whatever your eyes sees, you'll be able to have it. So he's after your vision. And when he has taken your vision, he's after your strength. Because he knows that if you can't see, you can't fight. You are just punching in the air. You don't even know your opponent. And when he has done that, he says, I'm going to reduce you to lesser than a man. And he exposed him. And But he forgot one thing that we should remember. You might be feeling defeated this morning. But God is not over with you. Your circumstances does not define your end. Because most of us, we go through these seasons in our lives. And then we sit here, we condemn ourselves. We think it's over. We think the devil has got the better of me. 
You've got people sitting here who are on the verge of giving up. They are here because, you know, it has become a religion and a tradition to go to church on a Sunday. You might be down and feeling like nothing else is working out, but I'm going to tell you that you're going to come back again. Because one thing that the devil does not know, in Judges 21 verse 22, the Bible says, however, the hair of his head began to grow again. It has been shaven. Hope is lost. But the devil thought when he took the eyes, the eyes are the ones that are powerful. But he never realized that sometimes God had to take your eyes out because you are looking at too many things that are so not important. You know, God had to come and, and, and remove your eyes because, because your eyes are hovering all over the place. You can't focus on him. You see, sometimes the devil does not know that he is used by God to drive you to your destiny. When you give up, you are not doing yourself a favor, but you are fulfilling what the devil wants. You see, the devil took his vision out, but the devil never knew that he's propelling him to his destiny. Because God is never finished with us. One thing that the devil doesn't know is you might have been shaven, but the hair will grow again. It is only a question of time. Because, you know, I was saying to people this morning, have you, have you checked yourself? Something is growing. You must look at yourself every morning you wake up. I know sometimes there are people who've got attendance who can't bear to see themselves in front of a mirror. I want you to pay attention to yourself. You stand at least for two minutes before the mirror, either before you shower or after a shower. And then you look at it, you pay careful attention to yourself. And you'll realize two things. That your vision is still clear. Secondly, you are still alive. Don't think of, do I have the money? Do I have the job? Am I going to be able to pay the debts? No, 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 no. You see, God is looking for two things. I can still see. I am still alive. That's hope on its own. It means if I can still see and I'm still alive, God can still use me. If I'm still able, God can still use me. Because you see, the devil is always quicker to celebrate a downfall. There's one thing I love about this man because the devil is quick to celebrate our temporary setback. That's his problem. So this man, he's grinding in prison. He can't see anymore because God made sure that you don't see because he can have you all to his own. God made sure that he removes everyone else who is surrounding you, who's disturbing you. And this is what I want you to do. When you get home, you need to get an A4 paper. And you write on it, do not disturb God at work. This man is sitting there. All he does is he's grinding. As he's grinding, he's remembering what the Lord has done in his life. As he's grinding, he cannot see anything else, but, but he can see the Philistines falling. As he's grinding, he can see the grace of God that has carried him over the years. As he's grinding, he can see the favor of God that has kept him alive until today. As he's grinding, he can realize that God is still on my side. In your moment of grinding, don't forget to praise him. Dance in the rain if you have to. But don't run away from the rain. Because when you dance in the rain, you'll be able to praise when the rain is gone. Don't ever run away from your troubles because you feel that you cannot worship God in your troubles. Worship him when you don't have anything else. Because when all these things come back, they will find you in a moment of worship. 
The Bible says they will stay in perfect peace. Those whose heart and mind stays in him. So if my mind is staying in him, I don't need money. I just need peace first. Because if I get money without peace, I'm going to mess up with the same money. If I get all this wealth and I don't have the peace of God, I won't know what I'm going to do with it. But I need to find peace. When I have peace, I know what to do with everything God is blessing me with. Let's close it. This man, he prays to God kindly. And he says, Lord, and my eyes might not see. There are things that the devil has blinded you on. It's okay, you cannot see them. It's okay, people might be telling you that it's your fault. It's okay, it's okay. But, but all that I'm, I'm asking you to do this morning is just to find a moment and say, I know, I know I might not see right. I know I might not be, be, be seeing right or feeling right, but, but I, can, I can feel your hand. I can feel your hand. He says, I can feel something is growing. Yes, I might not see it. Maybe I don't have a privilege to stand in front of a mirror, but I can feel something is growing. Something is growing. Impalitsola ha o ke a lutlwa ke a tseba ke lahletswe ke dintho impalitso ha ke a lutlwa ke a tseba ke sentse ha o na le dintho tse o ke sa dietsang hantle but i can still feel your hand and he says once more god he says grant me just this moment sometimes we need to come to god and say father just this moment I know I messed up, but just this moment. You see, God, I have put do not disturb because all these voices are reminding me of the mistakes I've done. They're reminding me of the sins I've committed. They are reminding me of the decisions that I've made that were wrong, but I'm shutting them out just this moment. He says as he's praying to God, he says, Father, just give me this moment. He says, grant me strength one more time. I don't know if there are people who are asking for a one more time strength. That I, I know, I know I've messed up. I'm, I'm not going to blame anybody, but I know, I know. But just this one more time. I know that I might not walk right. I know that I might not have done right things, but, but just this one more time. I know that I have exploited the grace of God that you have given me, but just this one more time. I know I might not have walked right, but only this one more time, God. I know I've messed up. I know I've caused so many people pain. But just this one more time. Just to make things right. He says, Father, one more time. And he says, take me between the two pillars. Because I want to dance. Because I can't see. I want to dance for you nicely. I'm going to be a good circus for you today. You see, those who were laughing at you, those who thought you were down, you were out, you were finished, ask them to give you two pillars. Because God is about to give you just one more time. Because God is not finished with you. God has not written you off. God has never said it's over. God is going to start a new thing in you. Listen to me, Barcelona. Whoever has started a good work in you, he will see it to completion. It does not matter what happens in your life. He held on to pillars. And the Bible tells us that that day, the hall was full to capacity. He can't see, but God is saying, your last, your latter will be better than your former. I don't know what is it you've lost, but God is saying this one more time, your latter will be better than your former. It does not matter what you have suffered, but your latter will be better than your former. He says, just one this more time. And he held to the pillars. 
And after he prayed, because the enemy forgot that the hair is growing, the Bible says he pulled the two pillars and the whole building came down. And it says those who died on the day were more than those he killed when he was still able to see. One more time. Don't ask for too many. Every time I wake up in the morning, I say to God, one more time. One more time to defeat my enemies. One more time to level the ground. One more time to bring you glory. One more time to exalt your name. One more time for you to be known. One more time that the glory returns your tabernacle. One more time. God ask us to close our eyes as we stand on our feet. I don't know how many of us throughout the auditorium who are saying, yes, I have messed up. Yes, I know people are reminding me every day. But God, just this time. Do you only ask for this time? If you are here, we are here to pray with you. Because we have seen what he did in the life of Samson. He never reminded him of his sins. He never reminded him of how he played with the power. But God granted him. He's here to grant you your last moment. This is a moment that can take you out of your situation. This is a moment that can change your life. This is a moment that can write a new history. This is a moment that can elevate you. This is a moment that can return you to the former glory. This is a moment that can bring the presence of God in your life. If you are here and you are saying, Father, only this time. Raise up your hand. I want to pray with you. I feel there is, a, there is a power God is restoring in our lives this morning. That when we walk out of this place, we're just going to go one more time. We're just going to leave one more time. We're going to conquer mountains one more time. We're going to face our enemy one more time. We're going to fight for our children one more time. We're going to fight for our businesses one more time. Because one more time God can do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, hear the hands raised throughout the auditorium, oh God. You are God of one more time. Can you grant us favor one more time? Can you grant us grace one more time? Can you grant us the ability one more time? Can you grant us the wisdom one more time? You know what is their heart's desire. Right now in their hearts, oh God, you know what their minds are meditating upon. That which they are meditating upon, oh God, I pray that you give them one more time. One more time to show off your glory. One more time to win their battles, oh God. One more time to conquer the enemy. One more time to write a new history. One more time to bring back the glory. One more time to triumph over our enemies, oh God. One more time to be known that we serve a God who cannot be defeated. We serve a God who is able to change our circumstances. I pray that, oh Father, may it be done in their lives. I declare this morning, oh God, that may your presence abide in them. May it fast track them. May it accelerate them. May direct them, O oh God. We declare this morning that the steps of the righteous are ordered by you, O oh God. May you order their steps. Even if their vision is gone, O oh God, may you order their steps. We know, Father, you are able to do exceedingly. You are able to do abundantly above all that we can ask, above all that we can imagine according to the power that is set to work within us. We thank you and you bless your name. Come on, let's celebrate God this morning. Can you go out there? Go out there with the spirit of one more time. If you are here, you have already given up. Can we give God one more time chance? If your life is in such a mess that you don't even know where to begin. Can you just leave it in the hands of God? 
Can you give it? Give it one more time. Because God is going to change your life. God is going to influence your decisions. And he's able to do it in your life. And we know that whatsoever that you have in your mind and in your heart, he's able to do it for you. Come on, let's celebrate him once more this morning. We just want to check if you are here this morning and you say, but I have not received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. We just want to give you this opportunity. Because you see, he says, I'm the truth. I'm the way and I'm the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. He is the giver of life. And if you are here, he's here to give you a new life. If you know you don't have a relationship with him, I want to give you this opportunity. Wherever you are, raise up your hand because I want to lead you into a relationship with Jesus this morning. If you are here, raise up your hand so that we may pray together with you. Anybody here? Come on, let's celebrate God. All we are good. Let's celebrate God. We're going to pray. I'm going I'm to ask all the elders and the pastors to just come to the front. If you need any prayer, when we are done, we, we, we ask that you may come so that they may pray together with you. They may believe God together with you. And um, when we go out, please let's go and do our registration. It's a final day today. Let's just register, register for a friend. Bless somebody. And as you do that, God will continue to bless you as well. I'm going to ask us to close our eyes as we take the grace. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are God who gives us opportunity to do it again. Job says, even though you may slay me, yet in you I will still trust. We pray that you may help us, oh God, that as we continue to follow you, as we continue to pursue you, may you refresh us. May you fill our hearts with your goodness. May your grace and mercy follow us, oh God. May your blessings come upon us and may they overtake us, oh God. May you open doors that have consistently been closed before us. May you lead us into rivers of refreshing waters, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. May you bless the work of our hands, the meditation of our minds, and we declare that every area that we shall walk upon, that shall be given unto us as an inheritance. In Jesus' name we thank you. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Have a blessed week. God bless you. We love you.